If you look at Yuan, is this a litmus test for the trade talks, or is this really, you know, a government, um, I wouldn't say manipulated, but, uh, but government incentivized? Well, yeah, I mean, the government's obviously <laughs> trying to keep the markets very stable, keep the keep the renminbi. But a key thing that, that um, you actually saw just over the last, in January, was that it was really the US dollar weakness rather than the renminbi strength. And so th there's no reason for a, a massive surge. And remember, you're, you're seeing yields come down onshore. You're seeing the, the economy weaken. There was even a, in the state-run um, media, there was a 6% guidance for GDP for Q1. So no one is saying either the economy is strong or um, um, the, the, the renminbi should be fundamentally strong. Um, but we've seen a bit of a correction in, in January as the, as the rate hikes didn't come through on the US dollar side. Um, but that could, that could begin to reverse um, as we come into Q, Q1. Um, Miranda, I don't really know what to do with this. So we have the, the story that came out about an hour ago saying two large Chinese borrowers, one that's already defaulted and one that's under pressure, mm. missed payment deadlines this month. Could this be the start of something ugly? Well, we're already seeing, I mean, there were more defaults last year than any, um, any historic year um, in China. Um, we saw a lot of private sector companies um, under stress, a lot of um, pressure. I mean, the yields were rising, particularly for the sort of, you know, lower rated credits, um, lower, um, lower quality bonds. Um, and so we're going to see more of these defaults coming through because the, although, the, although they're getting more of the bank lending in, they've eased monetary policy, you're still seeing the shadow banking. We still expect shadow bank to contract this year um, after the three trillion um, contraction last year. I mean, that's unprecedented. There's a lot of um, tidying up still to do. So we, 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 you're going to see more of these things come through this year. Miranda, within these trade talks, there seems to be a complete ignorance about the X axes. I would suggest that America as a general statement in this administration have a timeline that's completely at odds with China. Can you describe as a China expert the difference in the timeline of the Trump administration with the new President Xi and as Liz Economy says, the third revolution of China? Well, I think there's many different timelines because there's differences even with the US because what you know, in terms of getting a short-term deal on the trade tariffs, that's fine. That's what China can do. That's what the U.S. can do. That's what Trump seems to want. But the real issue is the long-term, you know, the technology side of it, the, you know, getting the IP protection. And the U.S. wants guarantees. So it needs precedent. It needs several years of, um, you know, cooperation. It needs a, a lot of changes to the legal practice. So this is, going, this is not going to happen yeah. before the 1st of March. Um, whereas China is obviously trying to keep things business as usual. It's, it's um, saying, look, no, we, 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 can, we can change the foreign investment law, we can change the practice, we can do things really quickly. They want it to resolve quickly, um, the, the, the dispute with the US and China, but the, I, th I, think, I think it's the US which is actually going to need a longer time to, to really okay. get the guarantees and the assurances in place. I mean, I mean, I think of Jonathan Spence's classic book on the making of modern China, 912 pages. Nowhere in there are the x-axes the same. Where does the US have to set its x-axes to get any kind of agreement? I would suggest out five years just to begin. Is that close? Yeah, I mean, five, five years to get any kind of fundamental agreement because ne ne <clears throat> you've got a lack of trust, um, really, at a, at a sort of fundamental level. So even with the new foreign investment law that was rushed through, um, what Leitziger was wanting is some kind of guarantees, some kind of structure um, you know, in place to, to actually make sure all of the things which are promised actually happen. And we've seen from practice before where, yes, you get, you get the opening up, but then it doesn't quite work out how people expect. And, th and, th and that's, you know, going back to the WTO and, 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 the initial, and the initial sort of opening up of China back in, you know, back 15, 20 years ago.